Hey guys, Spot here. We're on to uh, Marie's journal, entry number two. Um, it's in the wee hours of the morning, man, before I go on vacation. Trying to get caught up, so when the trailer drops, we're caught up. And then when I'm done driving tomorrow, which is going to be like nine hours of driving, I can, you know, maybe pop the trailer up and, and post my reactions or something. I don't know. I'm going to try anyways. But uh, anyways, journal entry number two started with a package sent to Noah J456. And uh, he got this jack-in-the-box and check out... Check out that image on the top. Oh yeah, it's the jester, right? It's the jester from the front of Marie's journal. Nice, and I don't think it actually worked when he, when he tried to open it the first time, I don't know. The second image he posted, uh, these images he posted on Twitter uh, from his live stream from the package. This looks like some sort of cemetery of sorts, I guess, okay, that's cool. Next image, so we've got another letter and uh, this letter is actually written on pages of a, what appears to be a book. I'm not sure exactly what book. I do have some guesses. But anyways, here's the uh, the writing. Marie, please forgive how scattered this letter is. I'm scared that I will be found out as treasonous to the mission and therefore am writing to you in the cover of night. Things have gotten worse he uh, here as expected. The salt mines have been converted into a laboratory. The sword piece, this hilt, has not yet budged from its resting place. So he said he found the sword. Um, but he must have found pieces to it, so it's just the hilt that he's found in this letter. I'm not sure what the actual time frame or, or the date is on this letter either. So the next page. Uh, I presented myself to Dr. Straub with all of the zeal and ambition I could muster. I knew that he would see how Destiny had placed me at the right place, the right time. I presented him with my papers, some of the research I'd done with Lyndon. He looked down his nose at me, said my work was amateur, poorly documented. But in the end, he said my familiarity with, and then on the next page, the area would be useful. And like a desperate fool, I was grateful for this. I thanked him. He knew of our father, Marie. He had heard of how father's weapon designs had helped the Kaiserlich Marine. But he laughed, laughed, that the brilliant Heinz Fischer had ended up making toys. I did not care to tell him that Father had chosen to make toys as penitents, to bring joy where before his inventions had brought only death. I should have listened to Father. I should have listened. The actual uh, next page doesn't have any writing on it for some reason. And then the final page... I don't know when I will be able to contact you again. I hope that you have found it in your heart to forgive me. If not, I hope you will pass along my story as a cautionary tale. I hope that you will fight whatever horrors are hidden beneath the mountain. VGK. All right, so that's 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 the letter from Klaus to Marie. Um, yeah, as far as the book is concerned, I think it's it's some sort of quasi-religious book that looks at historical figures and, um, you know, areas where there's hidden treasures, basically. I mean, that's why they're searching uh, for Barbarossa's sword. Uh, this particular page, uh, I think, actually references the 19th dynasty of Egypt, if you look at the very top. i just trying to plug in random stuff into Google Translate, trying to translate this stuff. But the 19th dynasty of Egypt is uh, classified as the second dynasty of the ancient Egyptian New Kingdom period, lasting from 1292 BC to 1189 BC. The 9th dynasty and the 20th, furthermore, together constitute an era known as the Ramesside period. So again, I just think this book is referencing, you know, like the 19th dynasty, where the pharaohs might be buried, where hidden treasure might be, and we might see similar references if we translated the entire thing uh, to Barbarossa. I mean, if any of you guys speak German, let me know, and let me know in the comments. So let's get to Marie's journal entry. July 24th, 1943, from the Journal of Marie Fisher. I have just received an interesting letter, a response from Major Hank Rideau of the newly formed MFAA. Apparently, the program has been rubber-stamped by the president himself. After weeks of being deferred through pencil pushers and secretarial layers, my inquiring finally landed on the desk of someone who may be able to make a difference. Major Rideau is direct and to the point. He expressed a clear interest in the artifacts that Klaus has alluded to and pressed me for details. 
Unfortunately, my brother is far less interested in these medieval museum pieces than he is in his captor's attempts at discerning their metaphysical properties. Okay, now she's referencing him as a as as being a captive, okay? I have highlighted the few pieces of archaeological evidence Klaus managed to share in his notes in hopes that it will be enough to enti uh, to entire Rideau into action. It is a paltry list, I know. Six years ago, the Middleburg mines uncovered a chamber below the salt mines, buried in the roots of the Kaifhauser Mountains. Go back to the first video, guys. Re replay that first video about Barbarossa and the Kaifhauser Mountains. And the crows. I'm telling you, winter's coming. It contains several altars and is adorned with remarkably preserved medieval carvings. A hand-picked band of fanatical Nazi thugs, a group known as the Ananerb, took, took over the mine shortly thereafter and sealed off the area. Nobody was allowed in or out of Middleburg. Klaus believes the chamber to have been the chamber dedicated to the Emperor Frederick I, Barbarossa, King of Germany, and Roman Emperor, and that has been untouched for 800 years. There is something in the chamber, some relic from the era which their leader believes to be sacred and powerful. A tool that is important to what will lead to the Fourth Reich. Apparently a quote from the Anfuhrer. I must confess that I refrain from communicating this final bit to the Major. The Ananerb has always been something of a joke in allied intelligence circles, chalked up to their leader's fanatical superstition and a welcome waste of Nazi time and money. This is why I believe that even the OSS has been hesitant to engage in such obvious nonsense. I pray that the hint of medieval treasures will be enough to bring the MFAA to my door. So on the next page in the journal, we have uh, one of the pages that we saw in the original package uh, and also the image on the next page of what looks like to be like a, stem a cemetery. And uh, we do have some writing on this page by Marie. Gone, knocked over by a farmer in 1923. Standing stones on hillside over Middleburg. Possible ties to salt mine chamber? Lightning rods? So she's thinking there's some tie with those standing stones, the cemetery stones, or whatever you want to call them, uh, to, you know, the chamber down below. There's some sort of mechanism here, possibly. So in addition to all this, there was a video that Noah sent out via Twitter that I'm not sure how he got it. Was it in the package or it was sent to him separately? But anyways, it's a short, brief video clip. It's kind of scary. Uh, we're going to show it to you right here. Okay, then, what the hell? I mean, that didn't exactly look like salt mines to me, but, you know, kind of freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> Maybe this is just like going to be the setting for uh, call World War II zombies. I don't know, man. It looks uh, pretty terrifying, though. So let's step back and take a look at a couple of things. The first is this Jack in the Box that was sent to Noah, and it's got that image on the top, just like Marie's journal book. And her dad's a toy maker. So making that connection, this is a toy made by him. And I did see some speculation on Reddit that people are maybe thinking that this is the new monkey bomb. Instead of a monkey bomb, we're going to have this jack-in-the-box bomb. Who knows, right? I mean, it's toys. And it obviously fits in with everything that we've seen so far. You know, going back through the letter that Klaus wrote to Marie, I mean, it does seem like he is having some second thoughts about what he's doing. He's not sure about what he's doing. His superiors aren't giving him the credit that he thinks he deserves, and there's some friction there. So maybe that's shaping up to, uh, to change our story a little bit from what we discussed in the previous video. There are a few other things like the MFAA, which is the Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archives program that we discussed in the previous video. This is going to Marie's journal entry. The Kaifhauser Mountains we covered back in episode number one. The Ananerb last episode. Uh, Barbarossa, the first episode. The other things that she mentions, there's two more things here. The Fourth Reich. And the Fourth Reich is a hypothetical future German empire that is the successor to Nazi Germany. We've seen that in video games. We've seen it in movies where, hey... You know, the Germans and the Nazis actually won 
what happened? You know, what happens if they did? Uh, Wolfenstein is is like a really good example of that as well. And I think the term for and Fuhrer, it's just the Fuhrer. I mean, it's just another term for Fuhrer. Leader, head, chief, commander, person in charge of a group or organization. So I think that's pretty much it for the journal, guys. There were a couple of things that were tweeted out by Sledgehammer Games and or Call of Duty in around that time frame, July 15th, July 16th. The first, of course, being David Tennant announced as being in World War II Zombie, starring as Drosten Hind. <laughs> this guy, I mean, you probably have seen him around. Come on, seriously. He's a Scottish actor and voice actor. He's best known for his roles as the 10th Doctor in the British television series Doctor Who. I, I only remember, I, I don't watch Doctor Who. I did in the past. My favorite Doctor Who was the guy with the big scarf and the curly hair. Man, that was like 80s, I think. Uh, he also was Kilgrave in Jessica Jones. If you didn't see Jessica Jones, uh, he, he was pretty awesome in that show as well. Amongst others, he was Barty Crouch Jr. in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So it's uh, very, very late, and I'm not exactly sure if Drosten Hine was mentioned in any of the stuff that we've been through so far. If he has been, I apologize. Uh, just not sure at this point. I really need some sleep. And on the following day, July 16th, it was announced that Elodie Young would be playing Olivia Durant in World War II Zombies. And if you don't know her, she was Elektra in Daredevil. I'm just looking at her uh, IMDb. Uh, she was the girl. She was in the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Miriam Wu. District 13 Ultimatum. She was Tao. Uh, you know, you can look her up. You can look her up. Anyways, uh, Electra is going to be playing Olivia Durant in World War II Zombies. And the final thing I want to make note of, uh, Sledgehammer Games did tweet this out also on July 16th. Have. So in response to they, now we have have. And again, it's some weird image. Uh, it looks like the back of a skull. There's something on, on, on somebody's, you know, spinal cord slash attaching to their skull of sorts. I, I don't know. I don't know. It looks pretty gruesome. I'm, not I'm looking forward to this, man. Come on, Dead Space. The creators of Dead Space here, the developers behind Dead Space are doing Call of Duty Zombies. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. And uh, guys, I will be covering the next journal entry for Marie very, very shortly. Like I've said, I'm probably going to be staying up all night before I go on vacation to try and get this shit done for you guys. I hope you're enjoying I'm enjoying putting it together. It's it's quite interesting putting all this stuff together. It truly is. We'll see you next time. Spider out.